All right, so one problem this machine has is the cutting edge on the blade is worn down all the way. The first thing I want to do here is cut this old cutting edge off because for whatever reason it wore unevenly. So I'll just cut it right about there. All right, the previous owner shouldn't have let this go so long because look what happened to it. See, it actually wore this hole in the bottom of the blade. Now down on that end, the blade is it's still solid, there's no like chunk out of it. So that's gonna be a little bit of work to repair. Look how much it bent it too. Like it's bowed out here, it's bowed down over there. All right, let's cut into it and see what happens. All right, so since someone ignored this problem way too long, this just turned into a bigger job than I was expecting. But I mean, I could just throw a new cutting edge on this thing and call it a day, but I want to do a good job fixing this. So I'm just going to take this blade off. All right, that's much easier to work on. Let me knock this dent out of it.
Alright, so I'm ready to put the cutting edge on here, but to make sure it's on there perfectly straight, I'm going to put the blade temporarily back on the machine. Alright, so this is what I got for the cutting edge. So this isn't just regular mild steel, this is hardened steel. Um, you wouldn't want to use mild steel in this case because it would wear down really quick. This hard steel will last much longer. I'll show you the difference. Alright, let's talk quick about why it's important to use hardened steel for a cutting edge blade. Alright, so the cutting edge on this Yanmar, this looks like this was replaced by the previous owner. So you can kind of see here where this plate was welded on top of the worn out plate right here. So this cutting edge, this is nice. This has been on here since I've had the machine and it's nice and sharp. And when it's sharp, it really does a good job, you know, cutting into the ground. And one way to kind of tell is if we take a spring punch and give it a punch and it barely leaves a mark. See, I mean, it, you, it, it leaves a dent, but it's, it's so tiny. Okay, now if we go to this Komatsu here. All right, I think that thing needs a battery. All right, so on this machine, it also kind of looks like the cutting edge has been replaced. You can kind of see where it was welded up top here. But on this one, I don't think they used hard steel and the cutting edge kind of wore itself like a dull edge and it just doesn't cut into the ground as well. So if I take a center punch, so if I take a center punch, the metal seems a little bit softer. And you can almost tell with the hardened steel, you can almost tell by looking at it. I know that sounds weird, but it's just, it's just got a little bit of a different look to it. It feels different. All right, so I think the cutting edge on this machine was replaced with mild steel, and you can kind of tell by the performance. All right, so let's go back to working on that Kubota. All right, so this plate needs to be cut in half. Yeah, I was gonna have the steel yard cut this for me, but they said they couldn't cut hardened steel on their brake, or their, uh, you know, the thing that, the scissor thing that cuts steel and they were gonna charge me 40 bucks to plasma cut it, so I figured I could do that myself. That's good, that's cut in half. So I'll make this uh, factory cut, the bottom, and then weld this one. Let's see if I can get that arch out of it.
All right, so the reason I put this blade back on to weld this on here was because I was gonna put this cutting edge flat on the ground, put the blade at the height I wanted it, and weld it on. That way I knew it was straight. Now I'm seeing that this blade is bent. Um, so if I measure the distance here from the bottom, I got two and a half. And down on this side, I've got almost four inches. So it's an inch and a half different. And it's not that I cut it wrong, because even if you weld from the top of the blade, or measure from the top of the blade, here we got 14 and 3 quarters, and right there, 13 and a quarter. The left side is too low, so that's probably why the blade wore itself unevenly in the first place, because it was probably bent for years. All right, so I need to straighten it. I have an idea. Okay, so I know at this stage, it's really tempting to go and weld this all the way across, but you wouldn't want to do that because what happens when you weld something, the, the weld is hot, and then when it cools down, it shrinks. And what would happen here is if you ran this all the way across, that, that cooling weld would shrink, and what it would do is it would pull this lip, would be, would be moving this way really slowly, and you wouldn't even notice it until you welded the whole thing and, and then it's up at a weird angle and you'd have all kinds of gaps to fill in on the back. So I have it tack welded enough where it's not gonna break off and now the blade can come back off the machine. I could do all the welding on the bottom and I can thoroughly weld it because these welds aren't gonna break here. And then I can put the, flip it back over and then finish welding it and this job will be done.
All right, so what I'll do here is I'll weld this. It doesn't have to be all the way across, and then I'll add a new plate to make up the bottom. And uh, part of the reason this blade was able to bend so easy, it's got a nice crack right here. So I'll weld that up as well. Yeah, I don't see any other cracks in this thing. All right, I just welded this plate on the bottom. Camera wasn't on. Oh well. All right, that's welded all the way across. Now I gotta do this weld. It'll be easier to tilt the blade up. It's always easier to weld stuff going down. All right, that's at an easier angle now. And I welded this up and I got all the dirt out of here. All right, that's welded all the way across. Now let me flip this over and weld the other side. All right, so I got that all finished up being welded. So that welded pretty nice. All right, let's get this blade installed on the machine. Alright, that's all finished up. Let's uh, take this outside and give it a try. This thing just wants to slide off this hill. It's only, it's all ice underneath this snow. Let me go try to find another spot to push stuff.
right, well that repair went pretty well. That was a fun project. So my the reason this was in here, I was actually doing a bunch of work to it. Um, it needs a bunch of little things fixed on it. And I was gonna make it all one video, but since that blade was a bigger project than I was planning on, I'll just have that be its own video. But that's fixed pretty well. I don't think I'll ever have to address that again on this machine. But um, so I'll just remember the machine has 9,570 hours on it. So in 15 years when I might be messing with that again, I'll just go back and watch this video to see how long that blade repair lasted. But, you know, if you have a machine and the cutting edge is wearing out, you know, don't let it get that low to the point where it starts chewing up the whole blade. That would have been an easier job if that had been done maybe 1,500 hours ago. All right, so I'll talk about the uh, tools I used to do this project. Now, I'll put the links in the description for these tools. Now, this welder, I think, is about 20 years old. I mean, that company's still, Miller's still in business, but the one they sell now is going to be a little different than that. This plasma cutter, I bought that new maybe five years ago, so they don't sell that model, but they sell the updated version. So I'll have the links in the description for the new version of these two tools. Now, now these two machines, you know, they'll set you back a little bit, but I know a lot of people would have looked at that repair and thought, oh, this machine needs a new blade. Now, if you went to go buy that blade from Kubota, you know, it, it's cheaper to buy these welders. Now, this is like a 220 volt MIG welder, and that did that with power to spare. That was definitely the machine to use to do that job. Now, a stick welder, Now, for example, here's a stick welder, and it's a welder generator. Now, that also would have done that job fine, and that's a cheaper welder to buy. I mean, you can even get a stick welder that plugs into the wall. You got to get a 220 one. Don't get a 110 one. And get a DC one. The DC ones are quite a bit nicer than the AC ones. They're more DC is obviously more money, but it's kind of worth it. But you can pick those up used very cheap. I mean, they, they start a few hundred bucks, and you got yourself a stick welder. You know, the other thing too, I mean, that plasma cutter, that thing was awesome for that job. I mean, the thing was like a lightsaber. It just cut through that metal so easy and fast and clean. But the other thing that would have worked fine is an oxygen acetylene torch like this. Um, it wouldn't have cut the stuff as clean, but it would have worked. The thing I don't like about that is like you're always getting those tanks refilled and it's kind of annoying. The plasma cutter is nice because you never have to buy anything for it. It just uses electric and air from an air compressor. So it's like, you know, endless cutting. It's cool. All right, so that's pretty much it for this blade video. Um, the other thing that's going on right now is I'm making this Yanmar excavator a quick change so it can accept the same buckets and everything as this Kubota. And I'm pretty well into that project. Here is the Yanmar bucket with the ears on it. They're almost done. I just got to finish welding them. And there is that hammer with the Kubota ears on it. All right, so now these two excavators are able to accept the same buckets and they can be quickly changed. So that video should be coming out soon too. Let's go see Levi. Levi, how you doing? Hey. Levi.